Today, I will be showing you how to create these powerful and amazing light rigs. All these techniques can be applied in any application. So all of you Blender or Cinema or 3ds Max users out there, you can all follow along by applying the same techniques and workflows I'm showing you in today's video. If you want to see more lighting content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure that bell icon is turned on. All right, so now let's get cracking with our first scene from Fight Club. We have Brad Pitt and we first need to establish our key light directions and the main key light is coming from the right. And then we do have a blue rim kick light from the left. And we also have a fill light coming from the front behind camera. Let's go ahead and create our first key light. Let's scale it up a little to get softer shadows and then look through that selected light to place it. Make sure to increase the light's exposure until you see some nice bright colors. Now let's just angle the light until we get a similar angle as it is in Brad Pitt. So it's pretty backlit but still enough to, to catch the ridge of his nose. Let's go to the light color and change the color to a slight blue color so we're matching the reference as in Brad Pitt. Now let's create our next area light for our kick light. Now let's just scale it up a little so we still have sharp shadows. And then look through that light. Frame your object and then rotate behind his right face. Increase the exposure up to 15 to see something reflecting on his left side. You want to make sure to rotate so far until you see a nice edge lifting him up from the background. Also change the light color to a more saturated blue than our main key light. It seems like our fill light has a slightly green gel attached to it, so let's replicate that by creating another area light. Make the fill light large enough to get nice shadows in the face of the rhino. And now let's move it over until we see some filling into the shadow areas in the front of the rhino. Let's increase exposure and then place the light. Now let's adjust the color to a very slight green until we get closer to the reference. So comparing our render to the reference image, we can see we are still missing the strong edge of that kick light. So let's increase the exposure of that. And also let's try to add another rim kick light on the back of the head of the rhino to create this nice white edge around the face. Now select the rim and increase the exposure until you get this nice strong edge here. Right now it's still not strong enough, so let's increase until we get a nice bright edge. I like how it's affecting the face, but not his chest. So now what we can do is adjust the spread angle to create more like a cone shape. Now we have a nice, really strong edge here, lifting the rhino horns from the background. So the last thing is add a strong kick light on the neck of the rhino. So what I want to do to polish it off is add a texture to my light which is reflecting in the rhino's eyes. So let me just plug in a nice HGI light texture. Alright, so now we have a texture, but now we just need to increase our light exposure to get the same look back. This amazing asset was provided by the talented Damien Gumano. Check out his amazing profile on his Instagram account. Make sure to click the link below to land on his Instagram page. You can also grab the Rhino scene files from my Patreon to follow along and have fun with this amazing asset. Link is in the description below. Now let's analyze our next subject. You can see we have very bright and contrasty lighting. So we have our key from one side and we do have a kind of another key rim light from the other side. Plus we have this additional blue fill light, which is a very interesting lighting because it is very dynamic. It shapes the face quite nicely and we will be replicating this now from our Rachel asset. 
This amazing asset was provided by Darren. Check out his ArtStation profile in the link below. Now let's start out by creating your area lights and placing them roughly in this location. So now I will be creating three lights. Alright, so I was using the interactive lighting viewport to place my light. So now let's hit play to render the ray traced version on the Arnold GPU. Alright, so this is a very good start, but we still need to adjust our light. So let's get started by the right light and adjusting its location. I'm really looking at her cheekbone just to get the roughly the same shape and I want to see how it lights up her uh, neck area as well. Now let's jump on the other side. We are catching a little bit light on the nose, which you can also see in the reference. There's some little bit of red cut catching the underside of the nose. Um, let's just adjust the side of the light to get softer shadows. And the same for the right hand side light. Now let's place the blue light and just move it over to one side so it's a bit more side lit. I'm now looking at the shadow which is cast from the nose. There's a little bit of shadow underneath the nose from that blue light. Also, let's increase the light size to get a little bit softer shadows all over. You can see now we have a nice soft shadow here, almost a Rembrandt lighting. You can see the triangle is appearing on her um, right cheekbone here. So something is missing, right? Uh, we still need to add our last fill light, which is this bronze warm lighting coming from the right. So let's get that in by creating a new area light and placing it roughly in the right location. Now let's balance the lights to get the same contrast. We can see that the red here is not bright enough the same as on the right hand side and we probably have a too strong fill but now let's just adjust the lights with intensity and adjusting the spread angle on a few. I have added some environment fog so now let's bring it up for our main lights coming from left and right. Alright, so now let's get cracking on this very stylized creative light rig. Our key direction is coming from the screen right. Then we do have a blue fill and we do have again a red rim light hitting from the side. These are very angled lights and we also have another light coming from behind his head essentially hitting this section. So I can see roughly four lights hitting him and they are all flagged off with very tight gobos and spread angles. I will now create four area lights and place them roughly in those locations. This super creepy cyberpunk zombie was provided by Martian. Check out his amazing art station profile and look at his amazing artwork. The link is in the description below. All right, as you can see, this is the roughly placement. The big problem is my area lights are too wide, so I need to control now the width of their spread to get these kind of spotlighty effects. So let's just first start with the blue light and start off by adjusting the spread angle so it's essentially a laser beam. Then adjust the shape. Make it like a little elongated light and move it up and then place it again until you match your reference a lot better. Let's do a very similar thing to the green light on the right side here. Make sure to reduce the spread angle to a very low value, 0.05 or something like that. 
and then change the shape to have an elongated rectangle. And then adjust the placement a little bit. I think the left red light is pretty good. We're just missing the red light on his right color. So let's create that. Let's duplicate that red light and move that over on the other side. So I just copied the same light and moved it over a little bit so we see more light on his uh, right shoulder here. We can also increase the exposure a little to make it a little bit more pop and to lift it from the background. The last light we need to adjust now is his top light which is hitting his um, front of the head. So we need to do the same thing as before, adjusting the spread angle and really creating a cone shape from that. One last thing which needs adjustment is the light hitting his uh, left shoulder here. So let's just figure out where to place our top light and just move it out to the side a little bit more. You can now see we have way more contrast on this uh, left shoulder here. And let's just get this rendered. Big thanks to Damien, Darren and Martian for providing me these amazing assets so I can create these good looking renders for you. Don't forget to comment below what video you would like to see next. Mm -hmm.